Hello there invaders and welcome to Star Wars Invader. Episode 5 was out today and a lot of revelations were disclosed. So stay tuned and we'll go through them in detail. We start off the episode with the flashback of Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi training in combat. I was pumped to see Anakin in his Jedi garb again. It was predicted by many that this would happen. And I am glad it has come to fruition. Darth Vader is remembering the past, perhaps to prepare himself for what is to come. Reva arrives on Vader's ship. She gives pleasantries to which Vader dismissed. Vader is so fixated in Obi-Wan and wants to get right down to the nitty gritty. Vader, pleased with the third sister's performance, promotes her to Grand Inquisitor as she kneels before him and with the information provided by Reva, sets course to Jabim, where Kenobi and the four sensitive beings are hiding. Obi-Wan lands on the planet Jabim, which looks like Geonosis from Episode 2 of Attack of the Clones. They get off the ship to an anxious crowd of four sensitive beings whispering in chatter, perhaps for a combination of seeing a renowned master of Obi-Wan and awaiting the information of the fate of Leia. Rogan quickly relinquishes their fears and confirms Leia is okay, even before she gets off the ship. Obi-Wan spots Hadja. Remember the Jedi imposter that helped him escape the planet on episode 2? And in shock asks Hadja what he is doing on Jabim. To which he replies that after helping them with Reva, the Empire put a bounty on him. Great to see Hadja back on the screen. I really liked his character. He always makes me smile when he's on screen. One of the better characters on the show in my opinion. Obi-Wan, wanting to get Leia quickly back home to Alderaan, asks Roken if they could use the transport to get off the world. But the transport is already going to be of use for the force sensitive people to transfer them off the planet to a safe location. Obi-Wan offers to help Roken to which he is grateful. Roken then urges the travellers to be ready to leave. Vader, back on the screen, is talking to the new Grand Inquisitor, Reva, and plans the attack on their base. He wants to lock down the base to which Reva states her objection to, but Vader is more interested in just Kenobi and makes it known to her. Lola, Leia's droid, flies out of her bag and into the electrical wiring room. Obi-Wan reads inscriptions on the wall that four sensitive beings have produced. They are writings of hope. Obi-Wan sees lightsabers and robes in boxes and picks them up and looks at them. He can't have seen many on Tatooine. He must be reminiscing of a time when it was the norm. Lola, clearly compromised, cuts important wiring in the electrical room and the roof doors in the base begins to close. Obi-Wan runs over to Rokin to see what the problem is, and Rokin and his associates tell him of the control problems and that the Empire has arrived. Tala, guessing that they must have tracked, thinks it is Reva, but Obi-Wan senses Vader and tells them so. Obi-Wan divulges that Vader is not patient and predicts their tactics that they will use. He knows Anakin well, and knows his flaws from the past. The Empire, led by Reva, is swiftly established outside the entrance of the shut hangar door. Roken is panicking and clueless of what to do, until Haja points out that the electrics need to be checked, which after the discussion, Leia steps up to locate the problem in the electrical room. The room is too small to enter for adults, and as a consequence, she is their only hope. Obi-Wan knows that they need to buy time, so offers to negotiate with Reva. Reva knows what Kenobi is doing and tells him so, but the witty Kenobi has figured something out that she does not know. Reva revealed that she knows Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker, to which Obi-Wan figures out that she must have been a youngling during the attack on the Jedi Temple with Anakin surprising the younglings by slicing them to bits. Reva 
played dead amongst her murdered friends until Anakin left the temple. Obi-Wan concludes that she must be out to get Vader, and offers her a team-up to take him out, to which Reva refuses. Reva shows her trust issues as she claims that she has only relied on herself since the attack. Reva has had enough of the talking and sticks her lightsaber through the door, cutting through it like butter. As the fighting between the Empire and the refugees and the resistant force commences, Tala gets shot in the stomach and her droid comes to protect her until he can't no more. Tala, knowing that she won't make it heroically, shooting the control panel for the door to shut Obi-Wan out and sacrificed herself by using a thermal detonator to blow up the surrounding area in which she occupied to give her allies a chance of holding off the Empire. It seems to be in vain though, as Vader senses that he has got him. He knows that Obi-Wan will give himself up to save them. Obi-Wan does what he knows is expected of him, surrenders to stop the onslaught for a bit longer. He gives his weapons to Haja and tells him to look after Leia. Obi-Wan is hoping Reva will decide to betray Veda and encourages her to do so, while he is distracted by his obsession with him. In the next flashback, it is confirmed that Anakin was fixated on winning, which contributed to his turn into the dark side. Once Veda reaches the base, Obi-Wan had by now broken away from his captors, and by this point, Leia has managed to take the restraining bolt off of her droid that had been compromised and fixed the wiring for the hangar doors above them. The refugees, including Obi-Wan and Leia, get onto the ship as it leaves. Darth Vader uses the force to stop it mid-air and slams it to the ground, then rips the door open. But Vader was tricked. There was a ship behind that one that was carrying the people and as Vader looks into the empty broken vessel, the real ship quickly takes the opportunity to fly off away from Vader's grasp. Reva enters the room and tries to take the opportunity to kill Vader, but Vader already senses this, and he completely embarrasses her. Using just the force, he blocks her every move and throws her about, forces her lightsaber out of her hands and stabs her with it. Darth Vader reveals that he knew about her and her intentions from the start. The Grand Inquisitor enters very much alive, mocks Reva that he knew also, and that she is back in the gutter where she belongs. He takes his badge back off her as she lies bleeding on the floor. This is not how Reva wanted this to go. Not done yet, and surviving on hatred and rage, grabs her lightsaber. While struggling to grab it, she noticed Obi-Wan's communicator on the floor beside her. Haja accidentally dropped it on the floor in a rush, getting onto the transport ship. She checks to see if it is working, and all of a sudden, a distorted voice and image appears. It was Bailagana's message to Obi-Wan from earlier explaining that due to Obi-Wan not getting back to him regarding Leia, that he was going to Tatooine to check on Luke, and says he fears for the children. Kenobi, now aboard the transport, senses that she knows that, but he isn't worried. The episode ends with Luke sleeping in his bed in his home in Tatooine. I rate this episode 8 out of 10. It was better than last week's episode slightly. We got some revelations with Reva being a Jedi youngling when she was younger and is out for revenge on Vader, not working for him. Vader knew all along somehow and so did the very much alive Grand Inquisitor. Reva was used by them both all this time to get Kenobi. The episode gave off a few vibes for me. Um, the planet atmosphere closely resembled Geonosis, but the attack on the base reminded me of a watered-down version of Hoth and Crate from The Empire Strikes Back and The Last Jedi, respectively. The episode sets up major showdowns between the main players. 
for a grand finale of the show. I expect the next episode to be very long as there are many things to tie up. Is Reva going to turn to the light side and help the good guys or take revenge on everyone one by one? She might be annoyed with Obi-Wan for tricking and using her to escape. Will the path be destroyed or live on in secret? What will the fight look like between Darth Vader and Obi-Wan? Will it retcon canon? What will happen to Luke and Leia now that information of a significant secret is connected to them and Luke's whereabouts is on out of the open with Reva? I can't wait till next week for the last episode but I'm a bit sad that it's coming to the end, I don't know about you guys. It's really quick and I've thoroughly enjoyed watching this series so far so hoping the last episode is going to be the best one yet. Like and subscribe until the next time on Star Wars Invader.